In today's video, we're going to discuss all the latest trade rumors currently being discussed about Max Pacioretty, Jeff Skinner, Ryan O'Reilly, as well as some others, and that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, there's a lot of trade rumors floating around. Obviously we've seen a few smaller deals here go down in the past few days. The draft wasn't as active as we originally thought it was going to be. We've got free agency coming up on July the 1st, and there's a lot of teams right now trying to figure out how they're going to proceed with their offseason here. We could see a variety of moves here in the coming days as a lot of teams kind of jockey for position and get themselves in best situated for free agency, as well as making some good old hockey trades here just to improve their teams moving towards next season. So let's discuss some of the big names that have been floating around here over the past number of weeks leading into the draft that have still not had any trades and some of these are kind of newer ones as well. So let's first start off here with Max Pacioretty of the Montreal Canadiens. Now it was being reported at the draft that the Habs were very close on multiple occasions to trading him out to a Western California club. Uh, the first one was the LA Kings. It seems as though the deal with the LA Kings, the main sticking point was the contract extension that Pacioretty was being offered from LA to go along with the trade. That was one of the conditions is that he would have to agree to an extension. They were not having an easy time coming to an agreement there. I'm not sure exactly what it was, if it was number of years or dollars, but the other reports have indicated here that Max Pacioretty is really looking to get paid. Max Pacioretty has been on a very bargain valued contract here for the last number of years. Obviously, since he signed that contract with Montreal, his production really picked up, had some really big seasons, and it sounds like he's kind of expecting to get paid more than what the market would indicate right now, just to kind of make up for lost money that he might have missed out on before, uh, but that's not going to happen. Since that trade fell through, the LA Kings have gone ahead and signed a free agent forward, Ilya Kovalchuk, so you can say the Kings now are an out on Pacioretty. He also was a reportedly came close to being traded to the Sharks. At one point, he was being reported on the draft coverage on TV that he was indeed traded to the Sharks, but that turned out to be fake news. Did not happen, obviously. Uh, the Sharks are kind of have their, their hands in on a bunch of deals right now. Sharks won't be making any moves, I don't think, trade-wise at least, until they know for sure whether or not they're in or out on John Tavares. Obviously, they're one of the five teams he's meeting with, plus the Islanders. So until that gets settled, I don't expect the Sharks to do a whole lot. But depending on how things go with JT, they will likely be making some other moves if they don't get him on their roster. So look for the Sharks, but I don't know if they'll circle back to Montreal and look after going after a patch ready here or not. We've seen some reports about maybe Montreal and Buffalo, even though they're in the same division, maybe an O'Reilly for patch ready type of trade. That could work for both sides, giving the Habs the center, giving the Sabres a scoring winger. Uh, so that's a possibility. It's also been heavily rumored that Patch Ready would really like to go play in Florida as well. So as we all know, the Panthers already acquired Mike Hoffman, so that might take them out of the mix for Patch Ready. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are in on John Tavares right now as well. Um, so, you know, the, obviously that's uh, kind of tying things up with Tampa right now. So it's hard to say. We might be at a little bit of a stalemate here until the Tavares situation settles itself out. Uh, if Tampa were to make a deal with the Habs, though, uh, which again is a little bit... You know, just because they're in the same division isn't something that you see very often, but perhaps uh, for them to bring in another player like a John Tavares or a Max Pacioretty or any other bigger name players that need to have an, a larger or valued contract, Tyler Johnson will likely be the guy going out, and obviously he plays center, so maybe he could help the Habs. I don't know if there's a deal to be had there or not, but it has been speculated that Patch Ready would love to play down in Florida. So we'll see what happens, but right now there's nothing firm on him, and a lot of teams right now are kind of just kind of holding firm here until they know for sure what's going on with John Tavares. Now let's jump over to Jeff Skinner of the Carolina Hurricanes. Now he's been a player that's been mentioned for quite some time, really since the end of the year when the Hurricanes made it known that they're open for business, looking to trade players like Jeff Skinner, like a Justin Falk, like a Noah Hannafin. We've already seen him do the big deal here with the Calgary Flames, sending Hannafin and Lindholm to the Flames in exchange for Dougie Hamilton and Michael Furlan, as well as Adam Fox. So obviously the Hurricanes are not done here. Um, now Jeff Skinner does have a, a no trade clause and he has provided a list of preferred destinations that he'd be willing to waive his no trade to go to. It's not really clear yet on who is all on that list for the teams. However, I will say this, with the move that we saw the Penguins make earlier today, uh, shipping out Connor Sheary as well as Matt Hunrick, the Penguins have been linked to Skinner. So hard to say for sure if Skinner ends up going to Pittsburgh, but it would not surprise me as well. Uh, and if it's not Skinner that the Penguins are going after, they may very well go after Justin Falk because they could use an extra winger and they could also use some help on the back end. So either way, we might see a deal go down between the Penguins and the Hurricanes. 
Based on the deal made earlier today, I really do believe the Penguins have their sights set on something or somebody here. I'm not sure. It may not be Skinner, uh, but I know that there has been a link there before, and it would make a lot of sense. Uh, I think he would play well with either Crosby or Malkin, given the opportunity. So I guess we'll see what happens here, but Jeff Skinner is a player that's likely going to be on the move soon, and right now it seems as though the team that's in the front runner right now is the Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, the Minnesota Wild have had a lot of great regular season success lately, but have stumbled in the playoffs. They have a new general manager in Paul Fenton, and he's looking to shake things up by the looks of it. Now, it has been speculated that he has asked some of their top guys, including Eric Stahl and Devin Dubnik, as well as Jared Spurgeon, for their list of teams that would that they would accept a trade to because they all have some form of a no trade clause. So could we see big things coming out of Minnesota? Now, another player in the Wild organization uh, that has been speculated to be potentially on a trade block is Jason Zucker. Obviously, Zucker is coming off a career year, putting up 33 goals, uh, and is certainly drawing a lot of interest around the league. He needs a new contract, and they likely don't want to give him the big raise that he's probably looking for. So we very well could see Jason Zucker get shipped out. Now, with Eric Stahl back to him for a moment, he had a basically a renaissance season last year, revitalizing his career, uh, hitting 40 goals, which nobody's seen coming. So he has an extremely valuable contract based on what he put up last year and if you had to bet on him doing it again it's probably a bet you wouldn't want to take so should the wild sell while his value is high and maybe bring in some younger players to kind of help this organization longer term it's certainly something i've mentioned in the past and maybe that's the direction they're heading down uh, but either way the wild certainly have a number of players that appear to be on the block and that the paul fenton is looking here for the right moves uh, there hasn't been any specific teams linked to eric stall but we have seen a lot of the teams in western canada including the canucks the Flames and the Oilers all appear to have interest in Jason Zucker. No guarantees of all, obviously, that he goes there. We'll see what happens with Jason Zucker going forward. But he does need a new contract, and uh, we'll see what happens here in the coming days as we head into free agency. We've already touched on the fact that the Habs and the Sabres might make good trade partners if they were to consider a patch ready for O'Reilly deal. But jumping back to Ryan O'Reilly, there are lots of other teams that are apparently kicking tires on O'Reilly. And it doesn't sound like the Sabres are totally sold on trading him. Looks as though their asking price is quite high. And the reason we never seen a deal go down at the draft was that they just know where nobody was coming close to their asking price and they're willing to kind of sit and wait and see how this plays out they're not in a big hurry to move them along uh, obviously the sabers are not in a contending type deal that they you know he's got a number of years on his contract they don't have to move him uh, so they can sit back and wait for the right deal to come along uh, but there has been some speculation that the st louis blues who appear to be out on the john Tavares sweepstakes as well as the vegas golden knights who also appear to be out on the Tavares sweepstakes, may circle back and try to make a move for O'Reilly to boost their center ice depth uh, now that they know that Tavares is not going to be in their future plans here. So could we see Ryan O'Reilly still move this offseason? I think it's quite a possibility. No guarantees, of course, but those could be a couple of the teams along with the Canadians that we keep an eye out for should a deal go down. Last player we're going to touch base on here is the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, sniper Artemi Panarin. Obviously, Artemi Panarin is a dynamic, elite player in the NHL and had a tremendous season for the Columbus Blue Jackets. They were able to trade Brandon Saad uh, for Artemi Panarin, so that was a major upgrade and took advantage of the Chicago Blackhawks salary cap situation last year. Now the time has come for Panarin to go into the final year of his contract, so the Blue Jackets would like to negotiate a long-term extension with him. When the player and his agent were approached about talking extension, they were told that they were not interested at this time in signing an extension. We've seen some reports indicating that Artemi Panarin would prefer to go to a bigger market team like a New York Rangers or an LA Kings or a Toronto Maple Leafs or any teams that kind of get some bigger markets, more exposure. At this point in time, it looks as though there may not be a whole lot to those rumors that Panarin actually wants out. The fact that he doesn't want to sign an extension right now, uh, to me, I wouldn't panic. I was the Blue Jackets. I do understand though their position that if they can't lock him up long term, and they're uh, concerned about losing him, that they would prefer to trade him and get some assets back rather than have him walk after next year. So I completely understand from a business perspective, but at the same time, it was kind of positioned that he would rather wait until the fall, see what else they do in the offseason here, see where this team is headed in the right direction before he commits long-term. And really, as a player who's been in the league now for a little while, is going to be a UFA status. He certainly earned that right. Um, I, I see the team's perspective as well, but really, I wouldn't make any knee-jerk reactions here. I would kind of sit tight, Show Panarin that you're committed to making this team as competitive as possible and that you're uh, dedicated to trying to win a Stanley Cup. And really, there should be no reason why he wouldn't want to stay. Looks like he had a good year this past year. He looked like he fits in well with the club, likes his teammates. So there's really no reason to think he'd really want to leave. He's just kind of in a wait-and-see approach to see what's best for his long-term future here. So personally, I would be a little bit surprised if we see a Panarin trade. And I think the Blue Jackets should really kind of settle their jets here and sit tight uh, before they make a knee-jerk reaction trade and learn to regret it down the road. But let me know what you think down in the comments. What do you think of all these trade possibilities? These are likely some players we're going to see possibly moved here in the offseason. Maybe not all, but we should see a few. 
you. Right now, everything seems to be pretty quiet in the Ottawa Senators organization. Of course, because of the year they've had and everything, all the drama, there's been tons of speculation about their guys, especially Captain Eric Carlson. But right now, there's uh, not much news to report on that front. All seems to be quiet. Uh, and so right now, could we see a deal come out of Ottawa? It's always possible, but at the same time, we probably kind of wait and see approach here. Uh, once John Tavares' situation settles down, July 1 rolls around and some free agents start signing some deals, then we'll probably see the, the uh, gates open up a little bit and see a little bit more activity. But otherwise, everything's come quiet out of Ottawa, so there's nothing new to report on that front. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.